Hi guys. Hello everyone from Bethesda, Maryland on this rainy day just outside of Washington, D.C. This is Karen Bertozzi coming to you um, from an amazing place where I work and I was going to share with you my experiences with cardiac yoga. Is anybody out there? Somebody's out there. Who's there? Hello people. Hello. I'm going to wait a few minutes. I'm just going to chit chat a little bit. Hi Karen. All right. Karen's there. I think I'm just going to get um, rolling. So welcome everyone. Just keep rolling in so I know I have a group to talk to. Sometimes it feels a little funny. It feels like you're talking to yourself. I'll do, I'll, although I do have my um, teenager here in the room to help with technology. So if you see a, if you see a, a face pop in the screen, it's my, uh, it's my technical help. So anyway, hello Sandy. Hi John. Um, so I'm going to get started. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my aorta story. We all have really great ones. I'll give you a little bit of history and then I'm just going to talk a little bit about cardiac yoga and some of the training that I've done in the past year. So to give you guys a little bit of a background, I um, was a yoga teacher for almost, I guess, about 11 years. I taught many, many classes a week. It was my passion. It was um, something I loved to do and it was a great complement to um, my lifestyle in terms of being a mom and raising my three kids. I had always been an athlete and it was just a natural transition for me. So I was always thrilled to learn more about yoga, thrilled to get my early certifications and then of course thrilled to share my practice with my students. So it was quite a ride, a really, really good ride. So about four years ago, um, I had, it was a Thursday, and I had taught two what I thought to be great yoga classes. Um, I've since gone back and talked to my students. They said I did a great job, so there was no indication that day that anything was wrong with me. But after teaching those two classes, I went to a local market to get some lunch where I fainted. And long story short, you can watch um, a previous post that I did for Aortic Hope with all the details. but. Um, I ended up waking up in a local hospital four days later. I learned that I had been through a 12-hour emergency open-heart surgery for an ascending aortic aneurysm with dissection. And then two weeks after my initial open-heart surgery, I had a dual lead pacemaker go in. So I am um, a aorta survivor. I'm also a heart patient, right? Sometimes we have a hard time defining if we are in fact heart patients or cardiac patients. Um, I kind of fall into both, and truthfully, I think, I think even us aorta people really do fall into that same realm of being cardiac, um, cardiac patients because it's also related. Uh, let's see who else is here. John and Sandy. Hey, Sandy, how are you? Hi, Gerd. How are you? Uh, so. As I said before, I had been teaching yoga for about 11 years before I had my incident. I had my incident, I took about a year off and um, just had to recover, I think like many of us, right? We were in, I was in shock and, and not really sure what and uh, sort of what my limitations were and if there were any limitations. So the long and short of it for me, and just keep in mind all of us are different, um, all of us aortic warriors and survivors are um, different than uh, than heart patients so be sure to talk to your doctor you know be sure to get your specific um, restrictions and just get a good understanding of what your doctor is comfortable with you doing because we are all so different hey there TMI slack <laughs> um, so just be sure you check with your doctor always get clearance again I'm not a doctor I'm just a mom who was a yoga teacher for many years and then had this major health uh, crisis happen to me so um, yeah so about a year after my dissection and open heart surgery I um, found a program sorry my, my this is my mom she keeps we're a big football fan so there's a lot of scores I think a lot of games that are wrapping up right now so she keeps coming in with with uh, comments about games around the country but anyway um, so I was able to find a program a cardiac yoga program that was taught at the University of Virginia and we live right outside of Washington DC and I was able to go down there and do a program uh, with Dr. Mala Cunningham and she developed a program that um, with Dr. Dean Ornish um, in California, who some of you may have heard of. He was one of the first people to really talk about lifestyle in terms of heart health, diet, exercise, 
and that sort of thing in terms of um, keeping everybody heart healthy. So you can always look him up as well. He's got a wealth of information and he in fact has his own cardiac rehab program that he tries to, um, I guess, sort of sell or promote to various hospitals around the country. And uh, it does have a pretty decent success rate. So he's he, I, I was pretty impressed when I knew that he sort of had his stamp of approval on this program at UVA. Um, so I went to UVA and I did my certification and it was an interesting road because not only was I walking into this space as a yoga teacher who had taught very successfully for many years, but I also was a heart patient, right? Or was I a heart patient? Maybe I was an aorta patient, right? There was all this confusion about sort of what I was. But I know it was really interesting for the rest of my group, the rest of the teachers in the training program. I don't think any of them, including the instructor Mala, who um, I don't think any of them had really had a student, had a, a heart patient and they were a patient in class with them. So it was kind of a fine line to walk as we went through the training and certain things were brought up and I kind of hesitantly would raise my hand and say, you know, I, I don't think that's going to fly with a heart patient or, you know, it's not going to feel like that. It's going to feel like this. And, and um, I'm hoping I offered them some pretty good insight and I'm hoping I was not a real pain in the you know what. <laughs> I hope I gave them food for thought. So that was my goal anyway. My intention was not to um, upset the program, but Anyway, all in all, it was a great program. I came back to Bethesda um, after completing the training, and I was fortunate enough to um, start teaching right away at the hospital that had saved my life, at Suburban Hospital, at Johns Hopkins Hospital here in Bethesda, Maryland. Um, and I've got the program up and running. I've been teaching about a year. I have um, a pretty steady stream of about 12 to 15 patients that do come um, to class. Suburban is undergoing some construction right now, so space is really an issue. So I kind of, of course, board meetings preempt any <laughs> space reservations for yoga classes. So I kind of get pushed to the, to the side quite a bit. But my students are um, a pretty good cross section of heart patients. I would say the majority of the patients of my regulars anyway are men probably in their late 60s, early 70s. Um, I have uh, sort of a core group of women. It's interesting. I do have one woman in her 40s, one woman in her 50s, one in her 60s, one in her 70s, and one in her 80s. So the five of us have gotten to be pretty good friends. I think it's really interesting to share your stories, especially across generations like that. So that's been a real treat to have those ladies around. Um, and all of us in the class have varying degrees of um, heart health and challenges that we've had. Nobody. Um, actually, there is one more person in the class who's had dissection. His name is Virgil. He's a, he's a great, great guy. Love him dearly, and um, he does the best that he can. And, and that's all yoga is about, really, is doing the best you can. Some of the patients in there have had MIs, heart attacks, uh, myocardial infarctions. Some people have had uh, valve replacements. Some have had TAVR. Some people have had two open heart procedures. Some have had um, cabbage. Some have had... Uh, gosh, you name it, uh, you know, and it's one of those things when you start to meet heart patients, it's not that people just had a heart attack, right, or just have a stent, right, we're all, I think, in terms of it, when something like this happens to you cardiovascularly, I think it really equals out the playing field, um, so it's great, I really love it, um, we're learning a lot, and I hope that I'm bringing some other resources to the people in the group in terms of them dealing with their um, the changes in their body, the changes in their ability to move maybe the way they used to. And certainly I hope it's bringing them some skills in terms of dealing with fear and stress, which I think so many of us deal with. Um, one of the things that I think is kind of interesting, uh, and maybe, maybe many of you have, hey Diane, Maybe many of you also have sort of developed this kind of um, coping skill of having a sense of humor as we've been dealing with our events, but I kind of joke a little bit. I tell people, you know, for years as a, as a yoga instructor to sort of the general population, I talked a lot about opening your heart, opening your heart, open your heart, open your heart, open your heart. Well, mine opened, right? So um, that kind of still makes me giggle a little bit, you know, I kind of... Um, you know, 
anyway, so that's my story really in terms of that. So um, I do still think it's very important to open your heart, whatever that means for you. Obviously, I don't like to imagine that on a physical level anymore. <laughs> but, you know, yoga is the combination of mind, body, and spirit. And I think oftentimes for most of us, the physical part of it, the body part of it is probably the easy part. And I think for those of us that are heart patients um, and are um, in shock or maybe suffering from PTSD, I think the emotional and spiritual part of it is harder, right? What we what gets stuck in our head, I think that's much harder to uh, figure out, especially those of us that have had aneurysms and dissection, right? It's a lot. I think there's a lot of fear. I think um, we're always waiting for sort of the next episode or the next sort of stressful round of tests to come around. Um, and I think, or actually I know that some of these skills in yoga can be really helpful. Um, what else can I tell you? So in terms of yoga, everything we do in a cardiac yoga class is super, super, super modified, which is perfect for the cardiac patient. And truthfully, what I teach in a cardiac yoga class, I could teach to an older population. I could teach to um, people that have had um, perhaps like uh, hip replacement or knee replacement. You know, it's just really, really modified down. And what I would say is, uh, and I learned this years ago, even before I had my incident, um, one of the best things you can do when you come to yoga is to leave your ego at the door, right? What we really learn is how to um, accept where our bodies are today. And I think this is really important for those of us that have had open heart surgery. Uh, never comparing to what we could do yesterday or last week or last month or last year or 10 years ago. You know, I think in yoga you really... Um, are allowed that place in your head where as soon as you start moving, you are scanning your body just to see where things are, right? And it doesn't matter if you're 15 years old, as my daughter is, or if you're 50 years old, like I am, right? Every day you're going to be a little sore. Every day you might be a little congested. Every day your breathing might be a little funky. You might have a little chest cold. So you are always coming to the mat, coming to your practice, just honoring where things are today for you. And I know for me it changes all the time, all the time, and especially as, as I'm aging, right? You kind of have, um, you wish you had an oil can next to you all the time to keep everything moving and grooving the way it used to. So, um, as I was mentioning, you know, yoga is the connection of mind, body, and spirit, and, and, and again, I, I do think the body part is the easy part. The spirit part, um, you know, just that awareness of, of really acknowledging that you maybe do have some fear, that you are angry about what has happened to you, that you are um, tired or depressed. I think those are all really um, common, common, common things that we go through as heart patients. And that was actually part of my training. So again, because I had been a yoga instructor for all those years, the physical part of the training was actually pretty simple for me. Um, but there is a whole new set of circumstances when you come into this as a heart patient. You know, you have... Um, sort of this whole new level of fear and anxiety, which was something new to me. I had never really, really, really been through that on the same level. Um, so one of the things I want to share with you and remind you, and again, this is one thing I love about talking with Aorta Cope, it's, it's very casual. I don't, I have thoughts in my head, I don't have notes, so I'm sorry if I'm bouncing around a little bit, but one of the things I want to remind you all is yoga started of course, in India, some people estimate it started as long as 5,000 years ago. And truthfully, when the practice started, it was really meant to be a way to enlightenment. And that could be, in your mind, you can call that um, a way to get closer to God or a way to gain clarity or more spirituality. Um, and truthfully, the practice for many, many, many years was really sitting in stillness, quiet stillness and focusing on your breath. So in yoga, the breath work, the focus on your breath is called pranayama and people, even here in the US, I know a guy in Bethesda, he's been studying breath work for years and years and years and years. That's how important it is to so many of these people. Hi, Michelle. Um, so I'm just sort of sharing with you that the tradition of yoga thousands of years ago was really to sit in stillness, to have intention 
right? To have an intention, a prayer, whatever you want to call it, offering it to your God, to the universe, again, whatever you want to call it, um, just as a way to gain clarity and acceptance. And then you incorporated breath work on top of that as a way to um, bring peace and clarity to your body and your mind as well. So it wasn't really until yoga came to the U.S. Uh, that yoga became the super competitive commercial thing that it is now. And believe me, I was a big fan of that. I mean, I would be the first one to teach a class of 108 sun salutations on the, on the, on the fall equinox, which was yesterday. I would be the first one to crank the heat up in the room. Um, again, I was competitive. I had been an athlete, so that part of yoga spoke to me. Mm. And that's what I loved. So that was great. Um, but again, you know, keep in mind, it's always nice to go back to that place of just realizing sort of the roots of this whole idea and to not be intimidated by it. Um, I remember one time years ago in my, in my regular yoga training, I was mentoring with this very dear friend of mine, Trisha, and we were in this class and I was helping to assist the class and this older woman was in the center of the class and we maybe had 25 or 30 people in the room and this older woman, you know, we, we centered, we talked about breath and then before I knew it, this woman got down on the floor, laid flat and I remember looking at Trisha from across the room like, hey, we've, we've got one down, we need, we need some help over here and she was like, no, it's okay, just leave her. Well, I came to find out that that woman did that every time she came to practice. So that was like twice a week. She would come, she would lie down, and that was it. And, and I talked to her afterwards, and she said for her it was enough just to be in the space, in the quiet space. Sometimes, you know, there is music being played, but it's all sacred chants. Typically, it's sacred chants. Um, and to focus on her breath and to be with community. And that was healing for her. That was enough. So that was a lesson I learned long, long, long ago, and I love that. So um, don't ever be intimidated by the names of the postures in yoga. Um, they're all pretty simple. And, and again, in terms of yoga, especially for us as, as aorta patients or heart patients, you know, we really, of course, have to be careful. So when I had my event, I um, spent time up at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore. I have a cardiologist up there and I have a geneticist up there. And truthfully, you know, my incident happened when I was 46, which is rare to be sort of a woman and younger um, to have this happen to me. And I realized pretty quickly there was not much information in terms of um, working out and in terms of being physical. What are my restrictions? What can I do now? I felt like everyone I asked really had no real definitive answers for me. So finally in Baltimore, Dr. Thomas Trail, um, cardiologist, and I think he specializes in um, aortas pretty much, sorry, another, another football score coming through, um, he suggested that I should not, I, I, there are a few things I have to be careful of, and I've been following his advice for the past four years, and since then I've learned in speaking with other doctors and research online that these are pretty, pretty good uh, restrictions to have. So one, my heart rate never gets above 150. Uh, that doesn't mean in yoga, right? But that even means sort of um, if I'm cycling or if I'm rowing or whatever I'm doing, if I'm running, walking, whatever. So I have that parameter. And again, everybody's going to have different restrictions. So don't necessarily use mine as yours. Um, I have to be careful with my head being lower than my heart. So my dissection uh, was ascending up into my carotids. So head lower than the heart is a no-no for me. So if you know anything about yoga, like down dog is definitely out. No more down dog for me, which is fine. Um, what other restrictions do I have? My heart rate. Uh, the other thing we, I think, all of us, and truthfully, I think this is probably a good guideline for regular cardiac patients as well, is we have to be very mindful of our isometric pressure. Isometric pressure. So those of us that are in this sort of aorta world, um, of course, our aortas are like a candy cane coming off the heart. You guys have heard this description a million times. Think of it like a garden hose, right? So it has the tubes. You definitely have your three layers. Many of us, if you've dissected, those layers have pulled apart. So you have false lumens, you have false channels, false blood flow. Um, and what happens is, um, sorry, another score coming through. What happens in yoga when you oftentimes mainstream yoga, you are um, exploring your breath. Sometimes you're holding your breath 
and then you're twisting on top of it, right? So in yoga, we have locks where you lock your breath, you really pull your belly to your spine, and then you're twisting on top of it. So think of it like a garden hose, right? You're twisting, you're twisting, you're twisting, and at some point, something might bulge, right? And those of us that have it, had aneurysms, that's us. And um, so you have to be very, very careful about isometric pressure, and that pressure does not happen only when you twist. Anytime you plank, right, high push-up, anytime you plank, um, isometric pressure is increasing in your aorta. So think about that. Um, and in any exercise, in any classes, really fitness classes, there's a heck of a lot of planking. There's a lot of focus on core strength. We all know that. There's such a buzzword in that. Uh, I'm a fan of core strength, but I still haven't found the best way that I can safely do it given my restrictions. So um, stay tuned on that one. But um, anything that causes isometric pressure can be problematic. So if you think about it, those of us that are compromised either through a connective tissue disorder, whether it's Marfan's, Airless Danlos, or Louis Dietz, or any of the sort of other ones that remain unnamed, but you, it's likely you have a connective tissue disorder, you know, there's, there's a weakness there. There's a weakness. So why, we're already compromised, so why would you want to compromise that? You know, those of us that have been through pretty traumatic events, I think we know we don't want to be compromised anymore. So even in terms of um, doing crunches and doing old school ab work, I can't do that anymore. That creates isometric pressure. Any type of exercise in the gym where you're holding and you're locking, think of like a squat with a ton of weight. I have to be careful with weight restrictions. We all have to be careful with that. And those of you that are still pretty close to your surgery, you know, there's still healing that's happening. Your sternum is still healing, right? You've got your, everything is trying to kind of come back into play. Your nerves are starting to find each other again. So definitely be sure that you talk to your doctor about this. Don't, um, don't, don't do anything just based on my words. It's very, very important that you have your doctor involved because, you know, dissections are different. Some of you I know have dissected all the way down. I so far have not. Um, and then others all the way up. So I think the, the uh, restrictions would be different for all of us. Um, so in cardiac yoga, we talk a lot about Truthfully, you know, I really do. I talk more about the breathing and I talk more about um, sort of some meditative thought and calming of the mind because truthfully, the exercises are not super, super difficult. But I will say that this tends to be my thing. I don't know how Karen Anderson talks all the time without a drink. <laughs> but anyway, I will say that um, that... So I was saying in cardiac yoga, we talk a lot about the breath, we talk a lot about the postures. One thing I would bring to everyone's mind, and again, it doesn't matter if you're practicing a cardiac yoga or if you're practicing sort of mainstream yoga, all yoga is about creating space in the body, right? But that, that can only bring benefits to all of us. So now when I practice and I'm creating space in my body, whether it's my spine elongating, right? Whether I'm visually trying to imagine a little bit of space coming in between each vertebra of my spine elongating so that my nervous system can innervate and, and work the way it's supposed to. Um, I think that's a, that's a win for everyone, just creating space in your body. And if you think about it here in the US, in 2018, we are all hunched over, our necks are crazy, crazy bent over, our shoulders are up, and we spend most of our day seated. So even when you're seated, you can really create space. And one of the ways you do this is you talk about your posture, you talk about lengthening and opening your muscles, and you talk about your breath work, right? So as you inhale, you can bring space into the body. And another image that I love, especially being um, a heart patient and a, and a survivor of, of my aneurysm and dissection, you know, I love the whole image, and maybe this will speak to some of you, that your inhale brings healing, whatever that is for you, right? So you can imagine your inhale, as you bring it into the body, you can imagine it's a warm light, right? Just traveling to whatever is bothering you that day. Maybe you have a headache. Maybe it's nothing related to your heart, your dissection, right? Maybe you have a headache. Maybe you've twisted your ankle. Maybe you have cramps, right? Any of that. If you can just imagine and really train your mind so that every inhale is bringing healing into the body, which I can, you know, it's just so powerful. Um, and the other thing in terms of breath is we, again, here in the U.S., we just breathe um, 
way too shallow. So I talk a lot about in my classes, you know, um, and we can do it now if you want to join me. And, and uh, it's kind of hard for me to teach to myself because <laughs> I don't see you guys. But what I would say is, you know, as you're seated, just uncross your legs. It's easier for me to teach you with my eyes closed. But uncross your legs. Your feet are flat on the floor. And just take a moment. Let's just see where things are right now. So I want you just to scan your body from the top of your head all the way down. So feeling that space of stress in between the eyebrows, feeling your eyelids being nice and light, finding a little bit of space between your top teeth and your bottom teeth. Let your tongue drop away from the roof of your mouth. Let your throat soften, shoulders just drop. Your chest lifts up just a bit. Your belly pulls in just a bit. Your tailbone is reaching long. Your thighs are soft. Your calf muscles are soft. And you are feeling the entire surface area of the ground through both feet. So you are feeling the inner and outer parts of the balls of your feet and your heels and your big toe mound pressing into the mat. So just feeling really, really connected to the earth. And as you're here with your eyes closed, let's explore the inhale. So I want you to find an inhale. And again, for those of us that are heart patients, some days it's choppy, right? Some days we can't fill ourselves to capacity. But as a goal, as you're here, I want you to try and take the deepest, fullest breath you've taken in a very, very long time. And you're going to take that inhale through the nose. It's going to be long and smooth and full. And I want you to fill yourself to capacity. I want you to feel your ribs expanding to the right and to the left and to the front and to the back. Fill yourself to capacity until you have room for nothing else. And then on your exhale, I want you to exhale through the mouth. That's loud. So it's like you're fogging a mirror, right? So it has a ha sound. And the idea on the exhale as well is to really um, feel that you are getting sort of into all those crevices deep into the lungs where there is sort of stagnant air and stagnant emotions, right? So that exhale is cleansing, it's powerful, and you are releasing any negativity that you're holding on to. So just take a few more rounds of breath like that. Your eyes are closed. You've checked in with the body. And I'm going to count your breath for you. So try to follow along if you can. So you're inhaling for a count of one, two, three, four, and you're exhaling through the mouth. And again, you're inhaling through the nose, two, three, four, and you're exhaling through the mouth. And again, inhale. And exhale. One more time, inhale. And exhale. Good, and so gently opening your eyes. So that's just a simple, simple breathing exercise that we do. One thing as you practice cardiac yoga is there's no holding of the breath. It's a constant inhale that drops right into a full exhale. So you breathe in, you breathe out. There's no, bre there's no breath and hold. It's in and it's out. It's in and it's out. And then as you start practicing, I like to switch the breath to in and out from uh, through the nose. Um, again, I think it's just, uh, cause you have to use a little more brain power to do that. So I, I like that idea a lot. Um, other restrictions in terms of cardiac yoga, again, I think for most of the population that I teach, most people agree with me that they're not comfortable with their heads being lower than their heart. Most of our postures are in the chair, but we do do some standing postures, actually holding the chair, and then we do do some postures on the floor. So um, typically, I think for most of my group, head and heart on the same level. I know some people tend to get dizzy, and uh, certainly when dizziness trickles in, it starts to bring up some fear, so we try to avoid that. Another thing that um, I know heart patients are very sensitive to is rising up too quickly, right? Even from a seated position to a standing position, we have to move a little more slowly and it's recommended that as you rise, you are focusing on your inhale, and that will help with dizziness. So again, if you're kind of folded in a posture, 
and you're settling in and you're holding it for a while, you're working on the muscle stretching and you're working on your breath and then all of a sudden it's, it's time to rise up. Nobody's comfortable just popping up, right? We take it long and smooth. It's just an inhale as you rise and everything settles. So really those are some of the only problems I've had in cardiac yoga with people rising up too fast and they get a little dizzy. You know, we have to keep in mind also sort of when we take our meds. So uh, depending on what you take, so I take some of my meds at night and some in the morning. Typically your meds take between two and three hours to kick in, it just depends. And again, it depends on what you're on. I think all of us are on sort of different cocktails. So. Um, you know, if you're going to do yoga at 9 a.m. and you take your blood pressure medication at 7 a.m., it's just good to be cognizant that probably by 9 a.m. the meds are kicking in and it might make you feel a little bit different. So it's very important to be aware of that. Um, what else can I tell you? The other thing that I love, the other visual or, or the image that I love when I teach the cardiac patients is really, uh, again, sort of just creating space in the body. So all of the systems of our body have room to work the way they're supposed to. And this includes our cardiovascular system, right? So as we stretch and open the legs and the hips, blood flow is feeding that part of our body and just helping to bring everything into balance. And again, I just really believe there's a lot of healing that can come in. Um, what else? If you guys have any questions, you know, ask away. I see a lot of love. Thank you, Christine and Tammy. Thank you for that. Um, any questions at all? You know, another image that I love when we go back to breath work, to that pranayama, the exhale is super, super powerful. I had an instructor tell me one time that, you know, your, this was before I had my event, but your exhale should be powerful enough to release anything you're holding onto that you shouldn't be, um, and release it out of the body because they mentioned uh, there's you know thought behind this yogic thought anyway Eastern thought that the body does not know what to do with stress and that the universe does I mean people would argue that point as well but um, just any exhale you know even if you're sitting down sitting at your desk and you take a few moments just to center that's what we call it center right so you close your eyes you build your posture you find your breath you do a few rounds of that cleansing breath where you are inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the mouth and then the, just really think about any stress that you have leaving your body through your feet that's where your feet are making contact with the earth and just think to yourself you know hey my body doesn't know what to do with the stress let's release it out of the body drop it into the earth, or at least drop it into the universe and just see, let the universe try and absorb it and, and make sense of it. But if you can really use that imagery to kind of allow that stuff to come out of you, I think it's really powerful, especially for us. Um, here's a question, what else can we do other than breath work while in the chair? Well, there's lots of movement you can do. So let me show you just a couple stretches. Uh, I'm going to have to get Sophia to help me with this because I'm not really sure how to show this to you guys. And I hope you can hear me as I do this. So I'm going to pass this over to So. Thank you. Should I be on this? I think I should be. Okay. Okay. So a couple things to think about. Um, I, this is actually, um, you got to come over more. I think this way. Okay. So actually, this chair is specific for cardiac yoga. So one thing to think about, it has stoppers on the bottom, and I actually have it on top of the yoga mat. So it's pretty stable, it's not gonna go anywhere. I could push on it, I mean, it'll topple, but it's not gonna slide. So if you can, you wanna find some kind of chair like that. A kitchen chair might work, a dining room table chair might work. Just if you have um, something kind of sticky that it can grip onto, I think that's really important. Um, let me just show you some stretches. So nice and easy. If you're on a chair, you can follow along. Scoot your bottom out to the edge of the chair. Edge of the chair. Your spine is tall. And let's just roll the shoulders. So you can do just a nice, easy warm-up here, rolling the shoulders. And of course, reversing directions. So here's what I'm feeling. I'm feeling a lot of popping and cracking. So not only in my shoulders, but still almost after four years, I feel a whole, you know, sense of adjusting through my sternum. Totally normal. Good. Nice and easy from there. Good. Let's grab onto the chair. We're going to work on the neck now. It's easy, easy, easy. You're just going to take your gaze over your right shoulder. And you maybe stay here for a couple rounds of breath. And remember, as you hold these postures, you're not collapsing, right? You are still maintaining a regal spine, 
nice and tall. Your chin is over the right shoulder. And then let's bring our heads back to the center and we'll tuck our chin deep into our chest. So there's always a counter stretch. So as I'm here, my, the bones of my neck, my um, cervical spine are realigning. As you're ready, let's inhale, we'll lift the head and then nice and easy, take your gaze left. So you know, the classes that I teach are a good 45 minutes to an hour. So this, I'm moving pretty fast here. Good, and we'll bring our heads back to our center. And again, we'll tuck our chins deep into the chest, nice and easy. Good, and then let's inhale and lift the head, and you can shake the hands out if you want to. So from here, nice and easy, holding onto the chair, just extend and bend the leg. As many times as you like, you'll probably feel your knee pop and crack. Again, don't lose your posture here, right? You wanna stay nice and tall, shoulders are dropped. Easy, 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 easy. Good, from here, let's take the right leg. We're gonna cross it over the left leg. Take your time, left hand high. We're gonna drop the left hand over the right thigh. A little twist, not a big twist, especially those of us um, who are survivors. So just a little twist here, nice and easy. Good, let's release to the center. We're going to take right ankle to the left thigh. Hands are on the chair. Inhale, rise up tall. You can arch back just a tad. And then when you're ready, dropping forward. Can you guys hear me? Could somebody let me know if you can hear me? And then so tell me if there's something on the screen. Send me a heart or a love or something if you can hear me. Anyone? <laughs> Anyone? Is anyone saying they can't hear me? No. Can you guys hear Nothing. me? Nothing? All right, well, oh, wait. Just... Thumbs up. Thumbs up. You can hear me. Okay, perfect. Good. So this is a huge stress, stretch right here on the outside part of my right hip. Really nice stretch here. Let's inhale and lift up. Always try to travel with a, a tall spine if you can. And then let's drop the right leg down. Whatever you do on the right side, you got to do on the left side. So we'll extend and bend the left leg. Again, not slumping, right? You're super, super tall hanging on to your posture. And even just sitting up right here, you're engaging your core. Remember how I talked about earlier, how my core has kind of, um, you know, gone to the birds. So anytime you're seated tall, things are engaged. Let's cross the leg. We're gonna take the right arm high. I'm holding on to the chair with my left hand. And then just a little twist, nothing huge, just being mindful, nice and easy. Good, let's come back to our center. Coming into this stretch, nice and easy, left ankle on the right thigh, hands around the chair, inhale and lift up, and when you're ready, just gently fold forward. Are you guys doing this with me? Uh, anyone? No comment? Good, and let's inhale and come on up, and release the leg down. Always give the opportunity to just kind of shake it out if you need to. So I know those of you that know a little bit about yoga have heard of sun salutations before. So there's actually a chair sun salutation that we can do, and I'll talk you through it, all right? So if you're with me, you're out on the edge of the chair, you're hanging on to the chair. Good, actually let's release the chair. So let's inhale, we're gonna take the arms high, let your hands touch. Take your time, you're gonna exhale and fold forward. You're diving over your thighs, head and heart on the same level, maybe taking your hands to your shins, and you're just extending your spine here. The crown of your head is moving forward. Your tailbone is drawing back. On your inhale, gently walk up to a seated position. Your spine is tall. Let's bring hands to the chair. You're gonna inhale, you're gonna take that right leg long. I am engaging my right quads. I've got energy pushing through my right heel and my posture is tall. I'm gonna curve. I'm bringing my knee to my forehead, drawing the thigh in. I don't know if you can hear me there, but let's extend that right leg long. We're going to drop it down. We're going to inhale, take the arms high, hands touch. Take your time, you're folding forward, no rush. Nice and easy, just diving down over the legs. Hands on the shins, find a flat spine. Take a couple rounds of breath here. You are inhaling and exhaling through the nose. Long and smooth and full. Keeping a tall spine, let's inhale, let's walk ourselves back to an upright. Good, let's release the hands here. You're pushing through that left leg, engaging, engaging. Work is happening right here, firing up those muscles. When you're ready, it's forehead to the knee. Find a curve, and then let's extend that left leg long. You're tall through the spine. Let's drop the left leg down. Let's inhale, we'll take the arms high. Exhale to fold, no rush. Hands to the shins, finding a flat spine. Keeping your inhale going as you rise up to seated, drop the hands down and gently close the eyes. So that's a seated sun salutation. That's a chair sun salutation. Did you get that? Any comments? 
Did you guys get that? You with me? So a couple other things you can do. Let me just check my time. Um, you know, there's, there's so many different things you can do with a chair. One thing, if you have a block, or you could use a book here if you wanted to. Um, we can put our block on the outside of the right foot. Actually, no, I want to do something different. I want to put the block right here. From here, I'm going to turn to the right. I'm going to drop my left knee. It's too high. I'm going to drop my left knee onto the block. I'm holding onto the chair right here. I'm going to inhale and take my left arm high, and I'm going to curve towards the back of the chair. I'm just going to hang out right here. So you take a few rounds of breath here. The stretch is coming all into that left side body. You're supported by the chair. You're holding on to the chair. Good. And let's inhale and come up. Nice and easy, just face front, and we'll switch it out to the other side. So when you're ready, inhale, take your right arm high, and then tilt towards the back of the chair. Good, and let's inhale and come on up. It's too quiet. Yeah, let's come around to the front. Good, nice and easy. Good. Um, what else can we do? We can take the block here on the outside of our feet. This is going to be another twist, so just be mindful. If twisting is not for you, you take a pass. And that's true for anything in yoga, right? If any instructor tries to throw something at you and you know you're, you're not ready for it, then you take a pass. So you can take your uh, left hand to the block, right hand to the back of your chair, and you can work on moving your shoulders and your gaze to the right. Again, this is a twist. You are breathing, especially your exhale, very powerful here. Your flow of breath is continuous, right? Especially for us, continuous flow of breath in and out of the body. Good, as you're ready, just gently unwind and come on up. Give yourself a break if you need to. And remember, whatever you do on one side, you've got to do on the other side or you will not sleep tonight. <laughs> Take the right arm high and then drop it down, right hand to the block. A little rotation, see what you like. If you don't like, you take a pass, right? You don't have to do any of this. Find your breath. Good, and just gently unwind. Nice and easy, and hang out right here. Close the eyes, and let everything settle nice and easy from there. Good, so from here, I just, again, I'm sort of bouncing around a little bit, but I just want to give you some ideas in terms of um, what you guys can do at home in terms of stretching. So you can also use your chair like this. So you start a couple feet away from your chair. We'll take the arms high with an inhale. When you're ready, exhale, fold, no rush. You're going to grab the back of your chair, walk your feet out a little bit, head and heart on the same level, and find a stretch. Just hang right here. Good. When you're ready, just gently lifting up. We're going to step the right foot front. So remember, you have your chair on a sticky mat of some kind, so the chair's not going to go flying out. And then just gently drop down to your left knee, release your left foot, and hang right here. So what I feel here is a huge stretch on the outside part, or sorry, just right here, the inside of my left hip, those hip flexors. And I'm going to hang right here. I'm going to drop my shoulders, maybe close my eyes. Good, and then I'm going to untuck those back toes, Pull myself together, come back to that L shape. Then maybe just watch this, but see what you think. Some people, depends on how comfortable you are, you can swing your hips forward. It's not going to be for everyone. And then you can press yourself back. And then as you're ready, you're walking yourself back up to the chair. Roll the shoulders up and back. Let's take the arms high. You're going to exhale, start to fold. You're going to grab the back of the chair. You're coming back to an L position. Good, and then from here, when you're ready, we're stepping the left foot up. You're coming into your lunge on the other side, dropping the right knee down and hanging right here. You guys still there? Is anybody there? Good. So one thing to think about in terms of hips, in yoga we do a lot of hip openers, is what we call them. Um, oftentimes back pain is actually tight hips. So if you can work on getting your hips open and stretched, you're going to have a happier lower back. So just keep that in mind. Again, this posture here, not necessarily comfortable for a lot of us, so just be careful. And then come back. And then when you're ready, walk it back up to the chair. Let the hands touch. And then release the arms down. So lots of different things you can do with the chair. Those of you that have practiced yoga before, you know 
warrior two is like this. So you can set up, but you always have your chair to kind of tap out if you need to, right? You always have that safety net. And just keep in mind, whatever you do on one side, you gotta do on the other, right? So you can set up, take it when you need it, if you need it, working on your strength and finding your breath. Uh, any other questions coming through? No. No other questions? Anybody have any questions? Nothing? Okay. So um, I am happy to share any of these postures with you. I can get, I can send them to you in a link if you need to, um, if you are interested in getting it that way. Um, just so you know, this is a block. Some people use this to support their postures. It's a yoga block. Some people use straps. Is no strap. strap. So you can use this for different postures. Um, what else? Who has any questions? No one? No. <laughs> <laughs> no one has any questions. No. Okay. So, yeah, I'll take that back. So I'm just going to. Um, how do I do it? Thank you. All right, so that was just, you know, a quick taste of some of the movement. And um, sorry about that. I am happy to, um, to share more. Uh, I, you know, I didn't know sort of what we wanted to cover this first time. I guess more of anything, I just wanted to encourage everyone to keep moving. Um, again, I think that's super important for us, whether we walk or stretch. Um, and I hope what spoke to you a little bit here was just the importance of um, accepting, you know, again, sort of accepting where you are now and, um, you know, just not expecting anything, right? And moving through our days with intention. So one of the things I do at the end of class, so again, you know, we do stuff in the chair, some of which I just kind of showed you very, very quickly with probably very poor form, but anyway, just to give you an idea of it. Then we come down to the floor, we do some stuff on the floor as well. We finish, we do our re relaxation every practice. So you're on your backs, it's called Shavasana. So you're lying on your backs, legs are long, and with my heart patients, I like them to take their right hand to their heart and their left hand on top of their right hand. So you're in a supine position. Again, you're lying on your back, your eyes are closed. This is at the end of the practice, so at the end of the hour, I put on some really beautiful, um, either sacred chants or just some beautiful instrumental music. And I tell people just to float. No worries about your breath, just let yourself float. And you guys can maybe close your eyes and do that with me um, for a little bit, even if you're seated. Wherever you are right now, just gently close your eyes, take your right hand to your heart, left hand on top of the right hand. So in yoga, sometimes these um, placement of the hands are actually very, very, very specific. So in yoga, we believe there's um, uh, chakras, energy centers in the body, one of which is the heart. And it's a very special place. It's where communication um, and connection uh, comes to play. And as you know, lack of communication or over communication, you know, we start to, like I feel it now because I'm trying to talk so much, I feel my heart kind of, kind of getting all involved. So right hand to the heart, left hand on top of the right hand. There are meridians in the body, so right hands in terms of placement do things a little bit differently than left hands. <coughs> Excuse me, so as you're here, your eyes are closed. And the good news is now there's no worries about your breath at all. You can breathe however you want. More importantly, I just want you to float. So just float. You know, don't jump into your afternoon, your evening. That will be there when we wrap up. So I am hoping you, I, I'm trying, I'm hoping that you will um, learn to take these moments of time where you can really tap into stillness. And I know for those of us that are survivors, that place of stillness can sometimes be um, a scary and, and uh, even though it's a quiet place, it can be a loud place, right? Sometimes the whole idea of connecting with our hearts, connecting with the heartbeat, connecting with our breath is super, super challenging and fearful for us. So just 
Let go of any expectations. Let yourself float. Just let the weight of your body drift back into the earth. So if you are lying down, everywhere your body's touching the earth, let that be a place where you can release stress, anxiety, worry. Let go of things you can't control. Just let it drip out of the body. And if you're seated, that would be the bottom of your feet, right? Imagine there's little pinholes in the balls of your feet and in your heels where the negativity is just slowly dripping out of you. So just releasing anything you're holding on to that you know you shouldn't be. And, um, you know, there is some muscle memory and some memory that comes into play when you can actually kind of come into this place of meditation and awareness so that you can really train yourself to drop into these places when you need it. You're also learning how to breathe through difficult situations. So when you have anxiety, this is a great place to be as well. So just let yourself float. I'm not going to keep you here very long, especially for these purposes, but maybe I can come back and do some, some meditation and relaxation. So when you're ready, just keeping your eyes closed, I'm just going to close out this class the same way I were if we were all in a room together. So when you're ready, keeping your eyes closed, just begin to wiggle your fingertips and your toes, maybe gently move your head from side to side. Wherever you are, on an inhale, take the arms overhead and find a full body stretch. Pull your rib cage out of your hips. Good. And as you exhale, just gently pull yourself together. Good. Wherever you are in a seated position, bring your hands to prayer position. Your thumbs are pressing deep into the chest. And I used to tell my students all the time to really press your thumbs so that you could feel your heart beat. You could feel the muscles and your chest rise and fall. And I have to say, it took me a long time to get comfortable with this idea, especially after my surgery, but now I'm okay with it. So just sense that source of life we have inside us, the miracle we've been through, and just invite healing there. And I always close class by kind of offering up some intentions and some thoughts for the group. So I always talk about wishing you more health and healing, reminding us all to move through our days with more grace and gratitude, a greater sense of humility, kindness, peace and calm and then I just invite the group to take a few moments finding their intention for their practice so that could be a prayer that could be um, something you're working on that could be someone you love who's struggling it could be someone you're struggling to love you get my idea right so it can be anything it could be world peace it could be hunger I mean you can take it on so many different levels but the idea is to state an intention and then when you're ready as a group, we take our thumbs to our foreheads. Give yourself a, a press as a way to seal and honor your practice. You draw your hands back to your heart and gently open your eyes. And then together we all say namaste. And namaste, you guys have probably heard of it and seen it on t-shirts. It's sort of everywhere now. But, you know, it is kind of like a, um, a wishing of peace, a wish of shalom, a chow even, a thank you. Um, my favorite interpretation is um, the divine in me recognizes the divine in you. So that's my favorite interpretation. So I just thought I'd share that with you. Um, and that's it. So, you know, there you know, lots of things we could do with this. We could, we could talk a lot about, you know, a whole series of chair exercises, a whole series of standing exercises, but I hope you got a little snippet, and I hope, if anything, it encourages you to um, talk to your doctor about maybe exploring yoga as a way to um, bring some health and healing into your physical body and into your emotional body, and maybe also um, get your spiritual um, side a little more settled. I know as we've been through these traumatic events, I know um, we question, right? We question, why did this happen? What am I supposed to do with this now? And, and um, I, I know I have those thoughts all the time. So you know, maybe that would bring you some clarity in terms of... Um, you know, just what you're working on and what your recovery looks like and, and what you can give back and, and um, just sort of what your role is now. But um, I think that's it. Any other questions? If we don't have any other questions, I'm going to wrap up. I'm going to give this just a couple more seconds. I hope it was helpful. Um, Steve, will you have her back on a regular basis? Uh, we can talk about that. Can we re-watch this? Yes, we can. It's my understanding it's going to be posted to the Aortic Hope page. Um, which that has already been answered. We are doing everything with you good. I hope, I hope you can hear me. Somebody's knees have been 
been cracking. Yeah, you got to have an oil can close by, especially if you're close to your 50s. <laughs> um, Alex, thank you. Um, yeah, good, 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 good. So again, you know, breathing is something we can all do. It doesn't really matter how um, sort of where you are in your recovery, and it also doesn't really matter sort of what limitations your body has. And again, like I mentioned, you know, yoga practitioners have thought for thousands of years that even the way you breathe can really um, change what's happening in the body. So even on a cellular level. Uh, and I'm not super gifted in terms of talking about that, but it is fascinating research if you um, are fortunate enough to have somebody around that they can educate you. But, um, you know, just think about that. When you're breathing, are you breathing shallow or are you breathing fully? And I would encourage you to find those big, full breaths. Uh, Tammy, I live in a rural area. Are there places or sites online that could guide or provide this for me? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Tammy, why don't we exchange emails through Aortic Hope's website and I can maybe give you some guidelines and offer you some of my favorite suggestions. Um, and I think that's it. I think that's it. So thank you for those of you that spent your Fridays with me. I hope it, you know, I hope it didn't interrupt your, your football time, but I hope I gave you some skills anyway. And again, like I said, please feel free to reach out to me on, a on Aortic Hope. Um, they can pass on any information to me or questions. I'm happy to talk more about it. And I would love to hear your experiences. You know, maybe if this week, if you find some time to settle in and even just meditate, right? I know meditation is such a big word, but meditation is really just sitting in, in stillness and, and checking out your breath and trying to release what you're holding on to. So hard for us to do because I know our minds are just going super fast um, with everything that we've been through and just processing everything. So... But you guys can do it, and it takes a few weeks to create a new habit, so why not go for it? And uh, that's it. So again, namaste. Thank you for everything, and have a beautiful week. Bye.